Hello everyone and thanks for hanging out with me. Here we have the Audi Q4 e-tron 50. It has the 77 kilowatt hour battery of the ID4. It's on the MEB platform, the same as ID4, ID3 and so on. Um, this is the all-wheel drive, so it's 300 horsepower, 20, 220 kilowatt. WLTP range is 480 around that kilometers. I just did the 130 kilometers an hour range test, so check that video out. But now I want to show you the car a bit. Good looking car. The tires are huge with the 21 inch. <laughs> Good looking car. You can see the, the family of the normal e-tron, but a bit different. We have the, oh, by the way, uh, it charged a tiny bit different than the ID4. Um, it goes slower down and it went up to 131 kilowatt. Not 126, maybe it's already different software. Check if this works. No, <laughs> I don't want to wait that long. Um, check out the trunk. Trunk has two lights on each side, little hooks. Shouldn't we have, and that around there is a 12 volt outlet. And here we have a special compartment for the cable. Look at the rear seats. What do we have? Just window opener, a little net, like in ID3, ID4. Oh, come on, I can do it. Middle armrest and two cup holders. The lights are exactly the same as in MEB platform cars, and we have the panoramic roof, all the same. I like the net better than my thing. And the seats are different. This is some kind of soft whatever. And the seats were pretty nice. And we have two USB-C and a 12 volt outlet here and your temperature control for the rear and air vents. And here in the front we have your window mirror control, memory seats. You have your light controls here. Steering wheel has normal buttons, not haptic feedback, but you can still slide. But they only illuminate when you turn on the ignition. And there they are. And here you have your music control and your voice control. And here for interact with your instrument cluster. And that's done pretty well because in every view you have this extra view. And then when you go to the right, you have the music and navigation and here also extra view done very neatly and then in here oh, I can't do anything now no I can't when you're charging you can't do just shows the range and the minutes uh, you have to charge to your desired state of charge which is 100% in this case um, but it does not show a kilowatt or kilometers per minute of charging you have your Audi infotainment system, your navigation, it always it uh, might take a bit and sometimes it likes to press. <laughs> it needs a bit more of a firm press. It, you have less settings in here than in ID3, ID4 and in other MMB platform cars. Um, but there's also other stuff here that uh, Volkswagen doesn't have. You have those drive modes, you have even can uh, do some changes for individual, but not as much as in uh, Volkswagen cars, for whatever reason. Here's your climate control, not in the screen, down here, done really well, the same as seat heater, I love that. Down here we have piano black, your gear change, uh, very similar to Skoda, Skoda Enyaq, but we have a park button, start, stop, here's your assist system, your parking, uh, uh, sensors here, you drive um, a selected uh, drive mode, and here you can turn ESC off. And here you have your music control, works well. Down there, we have two USB C and wireless charging, and another 12 volt outlet. <laughs> to get out of here, uh, the seats are pretty neat, amazing side support. I like them and very soft but warm. And then we have this big pocket here, and two cup holders no frunk um, and up here we have our normal mirrors with a light up here and the normal MEB platform lights here with fade and everything 
Now let's check out the seat and the space. Okay, see, like I said, seat, amazing, amazing side supports, but a bit warm. Um, steering wheel, it's a weird form and very thin to get used to that. Uh, headroom, this much, totally fine. The door armrest and the middle armrest, they fit together, very nice height, perfect for me. My problem here in the front is the, the rear window. So with the rear view mirror and the window, and I see this on the lowest position, uh, I can see out in the back, but I cannot, so I see the cars behind me, just the tires in a bit of the, <laughs> the bottom. I cannot see the whole car. It's the angle that it's done. I would have to be down here to see the, whole, the full car, but it's something you have to get used to and then it's fine. Now let's check out the space in the rear seats. Yeah, definitely less side support. Headroom, nothing. I'm touching, I'm touching the, the, the roof. Um, leg room is a lot, this much I would say. And even then there would be a, a hole in there, so I have even more, but it's a bit too low. Uh, but that's nice. And under the seat in front, well, they have put something here, but I can barely put my feet underneath under this, so that's not, not an option. And the armrest, do the armrest for both. They're lower than in the front and a bit too low. Uh, yeah, they could be a bit higher. They're made more for kids, I guess. Let's drive the Audi e-tron Q4 a bit. When you uh, put the ignition on, then you get the little privacy thing. You say, okay. Do I even have to press start? No, I don't have to. This is the same as in all MEB platform. Yeah, I should know that. You have D and B, and in D you have three levels of region, and the, the third level of region is a bit stronger than B even. Um, but what is weird when you drive, after a few kilometers, the region level goes to level two by itself. And I have put the auto efficiency thing here off, but I don't like it. That's why we drive in B. I'm in dynamic mode. By the way, here you have all your controls. I'm in drive mode dynamic. No? Well, you can select it, so do it like this. And I want to drive back to the dealer. Let's go. Yeah, I have auto hold on. And I've looked everywhere. I cannot find a setting to turn auto hold off. I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's just how it is. It's not the car, it's just me. Oh, we'll drive 300 horsepower, yay! Police here, they're waiting. Yeah, the, the view of the, of the power limit or region limit, especially power limit, of course is way better than an MEB platform, well, in uh, Volkswagen ID cars, because you have a very wide view. Ooh, acceleration is nice. That's my stuff, all wheel drive, 300 horsepower. It's my day off, I have holiday this week. Woohoo, a week off. Woohoo, party. Yeah, the, the, the speedometer and everything is really cool that if you can do this and then you have different, you have consumption, you have short term, long term, driver assist and let's do the short term and reset that with a long OK. Yeah, if you want to turn off lane assist, you can press the assist button here and then you have to go down and here's lane departure warning. The Android Auto thing does not appear in the instrument cluster. There's an ID4 on the other side. Yeah, the steering in dynamic is a bit too harsh, uh, hard for me. Let's go into drive mode. Let's do individual and let's the drive system in dynamic, but steering in comfortable. Let's do it like that. Oh, do we have 700 watt? I have the, the AC on for 21 degrees here, 21 and a half. All in auto. One kilowatt, ooh, and it says one kilowatt hours per hundred kilometer. Blind spot warning, and it blinks when you're put on the indicator, but there's still a, it th still thinks that the car is too close. I like that. <coughs> Suspension is good. In the beginning, I thought it a bit jumpy, but 
I changed my mind. It's it's okay. Like I said, steering even now uncomfortable, tiny bit too hard for me, but it's very stable. The drive is very stable. Consumption was a bit high for an MEB platform car. Yes, all-wheel drive, but 21-inch tires. I think they're summer tires. Um, music, the sound system is not my thing at all. It, it has a very low bass, not good sounding bass. And the worst problem when you go into the sound settings, you can turn down the bass, but that's then, then it sounds like nothing. So, so if you turn it up, then there's a, a bass frequency there that that's doesn't sound nice. I was not, I'm not impressed with the sound. It was, let's say it, it's, it's not my taste. I have a more natural taste for sound. Yeah, um, 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 uh, 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 adaptive cruise control. It works really well with the distance and keeping the speed. I like that. Um, what it, of course, what it, what is stupid is that it does only at lower speeds five kilometers an hour change of speed, and at the higher speeds above ninety, um, ten kilometers an hour steps that you have, and, and that's that's. Crap, total crap. Why, why is that? And noise level in here is not normal Audi e-tron level. It, it's more, uh, and, and I don't think it's quieter in here or louder than in, in, in Volkswagen ID cars. Ooh, gets loud at 160. Why are you? Yeah, I should turn off the AC, uh, the uh, adaptive cruise control. That's in the way. Let's see how 300 horsepower feel like. Acceleration is good, but it's also not exciting. Now let's see. It should be 184. Yep. Still okay. I think it felt it feels better than ID4 GTX, but it was on a different road. Region kicks in with a little movement. That's normal. Yeah, acceleration is good even at 160. Uphill. Oh yeah, uphill 180. Burning everything already. Burned five percent. Oh my god. Oh, I think there was a Cupra born on the other side. What is? What was the warning? <laughs> I can't see it with the GoPro. I'm guessing distance, front assist. As long as you don't break yourself now with a false alarm, that's okay. Well, let's see at 164, which is the speed I drive a lot with the ID3. And Maybe, it, I think it's quieter at 160, and it feels even bit, feels a, a, a tiny bit more stable. I need two hands for the steering wheel in the corner, because it, I need the force with one hand, it's too much force. Yeah. The steering wheel for me is a tiny bit too thin, Cindy would love that, um, and the weird form. I don't know, and I get sweaty hands here, but I get it with my ID3 as well. When I drive that speed, you can see the cruise control speed here with a red line. Yeah, that feels good, even at 180. I think it's more stable and feels better than the ID4 GTX. I, I, I only did a few kilometers with it at 180, and it's been a year. And ID3 on the other side. Yeah, that's good power. I want that power. 100 horse, 50% more than I have. Even on this bumpy road, that speed, it feels good. Yeah, the drive is recommended. What are you doing? Let's sum up the stuff that's good and bad for me. So good. Uh, um, I love the suspension, I love the stability, really awesome. I love that the heat controls are outside here. Um, I love the instrument cluster. Uh, what else do we have? 
and the quietness in here and the power negative consumption is a bit high the screen needs sometimes a very accurate point where you press it cannot be off by a millimeter um, steering wheel is not my thing and the steering is a bit too hard but you need a lot of a uh, bit too much force to steer then the seats are maybe a bit too warm Oh, now it's a great road. It's gonna get quiet. No, the wind is so loud. Ooh, there was the ID4 we've seen before. <laughs> is it a GTX? No, normal ID4. Cute. But overall, a good car. It wouldn't be my thing because of SUV style. I like that it's an, uh, an, an MEB platform, so it's not like the normal e-tron based on the uh, ICE car version. So that's nice. I like that it, the memory seats and everything. Um, it could have more region. I would like more region. No one pedal driving at all. But I think it's a good car. I can recommend it. So look at it. And it has the charge port not in front as the e-tron. It has it in the rear. Like MEB platform cars, other cars. Okay key looks like this you have lock unlock and double uh, tap for um, trunk opening but that's it for me thank you much for watching have a great day and take care bye